So that was Hardline. Right. We're coming off So we've got Hardline Taz. We've got... If we're going to... Let's just do... Uh, this is the Hardline section. Yeah, Hardline. Okay, so we okay. go to Wales. So we've got Hardline Taz. We've got uh, new track, new sections, therefore. And we've got new features that are all being tested. We've got a crash. And no, none of the footage is released still, I think, to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To this much, day. Yeah. And then we've changed... In uh, we've changed the track and we've made it work and then the final broadcast comes out yeah. and the track is top to bottom. Um, what? Why is Wales different? We've got a new track again. We've got a new section. We've got a yeah. big feature that's te being tested. The footage came out straight away of again the crash. I think because he was okay, maybe. Like okay. Dave got pretty hurt, unfortunately. I don't know if everyone knows injuries. I won't go into that. Uh, Dave got pretty hurt. He's fine now. But yeah, Jim somehow bounced and was absolutely fine. Yeah. Like, I think he hit his head. Well, he obviously hit his head really hard, but I'm pretty sure he remembers everything. I didn't think he knew where he was at the time. I can't remember. Yeah. But he was literally on my driveway the next day, just stood eating grapes, hanging out at my house in Wales. Like, yeah. he was literally fine. Yeah. And I think he knew the age we live in now, social media, it's going to be good for his career. He's going to gain loads of followers, get a load of traction and put it, like throw him into the limelight more than he was already, which is a shit way to do it. You know, you rather would have done something really cool to be thrown into the limelight. But, mate, it's given his career a boost. I hate to say it, and that's how it is. And people love a car crash that like you go down the motorway and everyone wants to stare at it. And um, it went wild for him. Like, fair play. He, he blew up on social media from it. I mean, it, it really was like um, something you. that catapulted that. Like, that event doesn't really need much help, but, like, it did blow up. It blew up. Even yeah. just me clearing it blew up, let alone him having the absolutely huge crash. So It's interesting that. So, like, I think you must have seen a lot of the comments, and I think the comments probably weighed heavily on, like, the final decision in, in the yeah, post Red and Bull, stuff. Yeah, Red Bull are really good with this. Like, it was Jim, they didn't tell him he could put it out or couldn't put it out. Like, yeah. Red Bull are amazing with this. Like, it was fully his choice when it went That's out. That's cool, yeah. Who did what in what order. There was a huge... No, I don't want to say strategy, but so many phone calls that went to the social media order of stuff being posted on what day it got posted at what time. There was a huge... That's good because so many meetings and Red Bull are only okay for it to be posted, even us clearing it. Clarify why that's okay. good. Because they care? Yeah, so the, I, I guess um, what I'm getting at, I guess, is like, the reason that is good is because you don't, you can't have then a fizzy drink company then posting the, the crash and getting like the first big boost. Oh, it's dude, well yeah. important that no, it's they, like, they really care that the riders get the glory off this or what they deserve super cool, yeah. for putting their lives at risk for them. Yeah. And we'll go through hours of work and late at night with all the riders and Jim, myself and Matt Jones, because he came along to make sure everyone's getting their fair slice of the cake, I guess, slice of the pie for the risk they've put out there. And, that we're all happy with how the media goes out and yeah. how they portray it. So we get what either we deserve or what they think looks good. I think they've, I think that's, I, I both think that's like really good that they do that. And I also think it's super necessary that they do it, that. It's, so it's like, it is both dude. And they've spent yeah. all the money on us getting all this coverage, but at the same time they like work with you yeah. to really make it super fair. Yeah. And come across, I guess how we want it to more than how they want it to. They, they'll double check, but they're pretty, like I'll give it to them, the Red Bull crew and the people that put on Hardline and Matt and Grace and Clem and everyone at Red Bull that do it, put on an amazing amount of effort to make sure we are happy and that it is how we want the event to be to be seen, I guess, and ridden. So, so cool and and cool to hear it from from you as well because I guess you're lining up on that morning at the top of the giant <laughs> Evil Knievel ramp. <laughs> Literally, it's terrifying, dude. Yeah, going for that that testing. Because we'd walked it the day before. You are like, do you know what? It was worse, actually. Back to Tassie. When we walked out, we all struggled to sleep because of the double the night before. Like, really struggled to sleep. Like, this is really scary. And, like, woke yeah. up early and were pretty worried about it. Whereas in Wales, I don't know. I just, I went to bed pretty cruisy. Pretty not really worried about it. I think I, it's because it's you're, you're in your own bed, you think? Yeah, I don't even think I thought about that. I was going to do it the next day, really. Yeah. I thought, I'll just go check it out. If we do it, we do it. <laughs> if we don't, we don't. Had you seen it before then? No, first time I ever saw it was the day before. You'd heard about it. Heard, I, I had a couple photos. G put a photo up that he wasn't supposed to, and you guys shared it. And you had to take that yeah, down because yeah, you G wasn't him. supposed to be put that up. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's where I think he maybe made the mad. And um, 
So I'd seen it off that when we were in Poland, maybe, or coming back from. Yeah. And then I was a bit worried. And then I went to it in real life. I was like, you know, it's not, it was only 70 feet to the knuckle. Yeah. But it looked like the biggest 70 feet you've ever seen. Which, that that's what's funny, isn't it? Because it's like, actually, uh, it's, you're doing bigger jumps on, on the track that don't cause as much head it like worry yeah because there's not 80 foot down canyon yeah. in the middle of it yeah exactly like rampage i guess it's the exposure and stuff that makes like totally, Brennan's battleship yeah. thing at the top literally a beginner will do that jump if it's in the forest yeah, yeah, <laughs> with yeah, no totally. like each exposure other. is but that's what makes it gnarly like exposure is an interesting one isn't it because it really it's like completely changes it yeah completely changes it. and it changes it to different levels for different people that's what i've noticed like some people are terrified of and some people in fact even thing. brendan is terrified of exposure i'm terrified of heights i can't yeah. run like a skyscraper and look out the window i'm scared yeah so like like uh, watching him do that is almost more impressive when you know how sketched out he is by yeah it's gnarly so so the exposure is what's dangerous about that jump uh as you're sat on top of the yeah kind of yes yeah. so we went up for testing the next day rode all the top stuff which was still pretty gnarly and steep and it was really wet Mm -hmm. which was gnarly cruise down to the can so we like okay executive decision we ride all the new top section then we roll down the old course to the landing of the the river gap or whatever it's called get there and we're chilling looking at it for like two three five minutes before we know it g's not come down with us g was at the other side <laughs> and he's like at the top of the running almost we're like what is he doing over there and matt one of the main guys comes over and i'm like mate get off the landing i reckon g might hit this like, and who knows what G's going to do? He, yeah. G might hit this, yeah. you know. The guy's an absolute nutter. If there's anyone. If there's yeah. anyone. <laughs> but it's like kind of spitting with rain. And it's like not a nice day out. And then before we know it, like a couple minutes goes by, G's rolling in to that rock, hops off that rock. Like no one's even done this yet. And knows how slippery the running is. Hops like the 15 foot rock gap onto the landing, just locks up, dude. And he's just like sliding towards the takeoff and somehow stopped. But it was, it was insane. Wow. That he'd even done that. So, yeah, he did that. And then that kind of made us like, oh, we best go look at this, I guess. And then we got some guys, the guy that built the ramp and Matt from Red Bull, to stand on the lip with like a pad because they're like big rugby boys. And then we start like running it in from the ramp because I guess the hardest bit of it was normally when you run in a jump, you can just run in and pull out the side, run in and pull out the side. You can like go into it with pretty yeah. much full speed and test like what you think it's going to feel like. But obviously we couldn't because we're coming down this evil can evil run in. I mean, it makes it so much worse. So much it, harder to judge. Like, yeah, because yeah, you're going in at a quarter of the speed, a third of the speed. I also think you end up second guessing yourself more. If you never, ever have a full speed run in, you end up second guessing way more, I think. Way more. Because we run it in like way more times than it ever would and just crashed into this pad with them crashing into the pad. And then we went pushed up to the rock. Did I hop off? I think I hopped off the rock, like from like the, the track once or twice, maybe. Um, once and you're like cooking like, if you if you jump off the ish, rock. But we could break pretty good. They've got this yeah. weird like paint. They mix them with sand and stuff. So we yeah. could. It was ripping off the mid, the mid bit of like the running. It was ripping off where it hadn't had time to like set properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think we spent after we'd run it in a few months. We spent probably an hour sat on the lip, forty five minutes. Yeah, we were on the lip for an hour and forty minutes. I think total, which is insane to think about a jump for that long. Would you prefer it this way? The, like, would, would you prefer if it was scheduled, like, okay, we're testing this section, or would you prefer it where it feels a little bit more natural? It kind of was scheduled and natural at once. Like, let's go up, work our way down, see how we go. Yeah. And That's nice, I think, a good way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, but we were on the lip for so long, and they were almost going to call it, like, hey, guys, you, you want to go down? Yeah. But then you've got G there. Now he's, like, chucked his bike. He's not interested in riding it, but he's, like, kind of there helping. We've got Dan Atherton, and... Me, Jim, and Matt's come along. So Matt Jones wasn't even supposed to be there. He was testing his bike at Dovey. And I was like, oh, we're going to go over and test the track. Like, he's obviously a rebel athlete. He calls them out and they're like, yeah, come along. And I'm like, this is actually really good because he rides way more ramps and wood than yeah. me. Like, I never ride wood, ever. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we were on the takeoff for so long. And I thought for a minute he would do it first. And he's like, nah, not interested. And I was going to call it because I was like, I'm pretty sure I was on the lip. And I was like, I can do this. I know I can. But what for? Like, why am I going to do it? What am I trying to prove to myself or who? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I can do it. But who cares? Like, someone else can hit this first. And then we were on the lip for so long. I don't know why. I was like, fuck, I think I can do this. I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to hop, dab my brakes, like, quick, and then I'll be fine. 
Like I hopped, dad the brakes, and we went through it so many times. I'm getting nervous now talking about this, honestly. And we sat on the lip like for so long. I was like, we should just go up and have a look at this. And I felt so bad. Like Jenna's sat the other side, and we've got a like, gym sister. And like, there must be ten. There's got to be twenty or thirty people on the other side. Really, by the time you got medics, diggers, boyfriends, girlfriends, family, it's all sort of familiar faces. It's yeah, quite it's all nice. Familiar, like. But there's like twenty or thirty people there that have sat there now for an hour and a half while you're there. There's midges everywhere. Like super bad this year because it's wet. And everyone's just staring at you three. And you're kind of like zoned out to it, but you are aware they're there. And they're like, we've been there a while now with the top bit of testing as well. We've probably been there three hours, you know, and we haven't really eaten any food now. So we're like, the day's getting on a bit. We need to get this done if we're going to do it or we need to cool it and get off the hill. But so I push up and I hike up. I'm like, right, I'm going up to do this. Like I decide always at the bottom if I'm doing it. Like when I'm pushing up or in the shuttle up, I know whether I'm doing this or not. Yeah. So like hiked up get all the way around on the rock. Steph, like the guy that works for the team, like our road manager, just helped carry the bike and he's not trying to tell me to do it. G is like, mate, you got this. Come on, do it. <laughs> like, not to cross him up, but G, I guess G knows. Like he's confident in my ability as much as yeah. I am. I guess that like, G is, he knows. And I get to the top and I'm like, hit that break. Hit that. And after a while, I'm like, I'm not going to break. Like human nature like takes over and there's this huge gap in the middle and I know I needed to break. So what percentage worry was it too far and too less? It's hard now to say. In it, because... Because I'm always too scared of going too far. Yeah. That's my huge worry always. And that was always my worry to start with. Yeah. Was going too far. But then I push up and I'd been for the last hour. I knew I was going to break. I was going to hop off the rock, quick drag of the brakes and hit it. Like, I just, in my head, I'd worked out the speed and that was it. Yeah. I decided, like, I'm sure this is the speed. Got to the top. No, nah, I'm not going to break. I'm just going to hop and go. Just because there's this huge ravine yeah, in the yeah, middle. yeah. But it's stupid because I know the speed. I've ridden enough things. I've worked it out now in my head. I like visualize it. I'm like, I can see me hitting this. I know I need to break. Perspective is very interesting though. And also like the fact that you had to stop before it every time and stop way before it. Way, way before it, you're breaking. So then your perspective from the top means more because you're looking into the ravine, doesn't it? Like yeah. when you, if you stand on a lip long enough, like that's what I find. And stood on the lip, you couldn't see the ravine. You can see the landing the other side, like easily. Yeah. Like rampage is weird because stuff becomes doable as you, as you sort of around it. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. You spend a week around like a giant cliff and you're like, do you know what? Yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> like I can see how people's like um, visions get kind of, off a bit because they're like around you so much. Blurred, you just yeah. become like... You, that looks normal, yeah. Yeah, you first turn up to a cliff and you're like, whoa. And then by the <laughs> end of it, you're having lunch on it. It's yeah, like... chilling, yeah. So I imagine it's the same with the wood. You know, you're Kind of, yeah. And like, dude, honestly, I got to the top, yeah, human nature. And I was like, nah, not going to break. And before I knew it, yeah, I just rolled in, break the wind, did the hop and didn't break at all. Yeah. And I dealt with the kick pretty well because I think the lip was definitely a little bit kicky. We had an eight meter radius. And no flat spot, right? That was the no, there was a flat spot, a huge flat spot. In the lip, the top of the oh, lip. No, no, yeah, the lip was yeah, just yeah. a curve. Which was always my worry, it was just a curve. Yeah. But I'm not an expert, I don't know. No, no, no. Dude, I had no idea. It did look a bit kiki, but no, I think I, in perspective or online, it looked way worse than it was because the run-in's so big. Yeah. So it made it look wrong. Do you know, I hate what I just said then even because I became one of the comments. One of the experts. Yeah, because, uh, been... you, and you can't do it because you don't know. if all of those people are right, then what are you doing dropping in? Yeah, I must If all wrong. of those people know, then what? Why am I there? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I am paid to be there to be good at judging this and be an expert. Like Red Bull have put trust and, in me. And you were giving it a go. So it's not as far off as I think maybe the it comments and what the far pictures. Off. And... It was just we had too much speed. Yeah. You see Matt gets it pretty good and even he went fast. So like, I drop in, hit it, no breaks. Like, I deal with it pretty well, but I go like two meters left. I land about 20 foot, to, I went probably 90 feet or something. Yeah, two it. meters left. Was that solely wind or was there an element of like no squirm wind. on the table? Zero off? wind. So it was, was full squirm. squirm. That was full okay, squatching so squirm going out. way too fast. That so, was just going purely too quick. Yeah. And then dealing with it. And you see in the air, I correct my front if you watch the Insta360. Three That's times. Really terrifying. Yeah. And like, I don't get stiff in the air much. <laughs> like, yeah. And um, I think I was probably like 10 or 11 inches from the edge of the landing. Yeah. And we'd never even considered going off the left. Yeah. I was worried about hitting the rocks on the bank on the right if I went too far. Yeah. Like 30 foot right of where I actually landed. God. Dude, like wild, we were so it? far off. But yeah, I went 20 feet too far maybe. And there, so we phoned, sh like after I got off the initial shot, got on the phone straight away. Whose phone was I on? Matt Bowles, uh, the Red Bull guy. And we phoned. G was at the top. 
who did we phone G, I think? So he stood up there with Matt and Jim. And I was like, whatever you do, I was like, we don't need to hit it. I was like, you boys don't need to hit it. We know the lip's now wrong and it's too much speed. I was like, there's no need to hit this. And um, But if you do, you have to brake. Make sure you give it a good... You're not going to land in the middle. Just one good drag of the brake. You're probably still going to go a little bit deep, but you will yeah. be fine. Five minutes goes by. Like I went through that probably five-minute phone call. And then Matt's like, yeah, I've got it. He's good at ramps. Dude. He's such yeah. a good rider. He's so good at jumps. And he's incredible. And let's be honest. Drops in. He's skidded on the takeoff when you watch his clip. Like full lock up. Hits it pretty good. Still goes a little bit deep. But dial, dude. And then Jim's just up there and he said he was worried. Like, if they hit it, I want to hit this, dude. It's a sick feeling. You're one of the first guys. And um, I actually don't know if he did break or if he forgot to break. I think from what I saw... He looked so quick. I think human nature took over with him. Yeah. People say they heard him break. I didn't. I don't think he did. I think human nature took over. He hit it and was like, nah, it's huge. I'm not breaking. And just compresses at the bottom and doesn't really, like, get up from his compression, you know? And it's just compressed still in the takeoff because it's like down kink flat and then up and i think yeah and just gets ejected which was honestly terrifying but somehow guys made a steal and he was fine so yeah did that like i say that was an eight meter radius we had with the ramp and the next day they're going all through like the night and the day and they made it a 12 meter radius and they made the gap about two foot shorter so if any fans went or dkna went on the lip so it's not there but it was two meters about two feet shorter than when i we hit it and it was a 12 meter radius, not an eight. So with a flat spot from the second half of the lip. Yeah. So it would have been absolutely fine. And it, and it will be in realistically next year. The whole thing Red Bull wanted was our judgment, our this, our that. And as soon as we'd hit it, we said a lot of mud coming in, a lot of rocks. We need a net. And they were like, yep, we completely agree. We're trying to, we've been trying to get one. And the ramp itself was put back four weeks due to planning permission. It was supposed to be finished four weeks earlier and tested by us four weeks earlier. And we could have had all this stuff done. And there was supposed to be a net going in if you got a flat tire, if your derailleur went in your wheel, like anything, you know. So it still is this insanely cool jump. There's like a big safety camera net you couldn't see. And the sides of the ramp even got camoed after. It looked amazingly cool and almost made it look bigger when it was camoed. Honestly, yeah. it looked rad. But they just couldn't get the net made in time, which was supposed to have an anchor point every three meters. And the net was going to be 120 feet long to actually go where it needed to go and hold the weight of a rider if we fell. So... The reason it got pulled was just the net couldn't get made in time. Just yep. a pure safety net, like the feature there itself and the new run in. But yeah, it it come under a fair bit of like negative negativity online. Yeah, people, I mean, it had. I was just going to say that so many eyes had seen it by that point that I, th- I guess it becomes more important to get it right. Yeah, definitely. Well, it was right. They changed it and rebuilt it yeah, by yeah, a day yeah. later. Like it has changed. But like the amazing. importance, it feels like a heavier situation, doesn't it? It feels like. If something had gone wrong, it would have been awful for us, the TV, the this, the that. It, and we were like, you know what? The other track, we've got the top new minute, which was insane, as Look you good. saw from the race. It was Look an really amazing good. bit of track. We don't need this feature. It yeah. would be nice, but we can have it next year. Yeah. You know? And then think next year, dude, Red Bull Hardline's back. And the river gap is back. Man. Imagine the excitement. It's going to be insane. I'm excited talking about it now. Next year, we're going to have the whole new section before it. And the river gap's going to be back. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, it is mega exciting. Right, let's talk about the race. Okay. Okay. Hey, man, what an episode that was. You did amazing in it. And so did you. You shone like a star. You shone like a moon. Can we also put something up here that you can click yep. on for the next episode? How about we put a subscribe up there in the middle? Yeah, love we're going to put a video we think that our uh, lovely companionship yep. will love. Yeah, on your face, on my face. Yeah, so and they on can't my see me now. gone, and on my face, another video that we think people will love. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please hit like and subscribe. You guys are the best. Peace and love.